Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today, Monday the 9th of May 2022. I'm carrying the magic me. Open Heavens is uttered by Adadi in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet. We we'll pray, O oh Lord, that you will teach us yourself, that your word will direct our path, and your word will profit us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic for today is, in the time of peace, prepare for war. In the time of peace, prepare for war. Part 1. A memory verse for today is taken from the book of Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his word, his work shall be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A Bible reading is taken from the same book of Revelation 22 verse 11 to 15. Revelation 22 verse 11 to 15. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. Let the holy person continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic acts, the sexual immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. The message. There's a story of a fisherman's son who had been taught how to swim long before he could speak properly. His tutor, the fisherman himself, was loving but very demanding. Every day he insisted that this boy spend hours in the water practicing new strokes and techniques. They practiced every day and no matter how well the boy swam, his father was never satisfied. The most difficult part of the boy's training was what his father called the floating exercise. This involves moving around in small circles in deep waters, keeping only the head just above the waves for many hours. At first, the boy endured it all, hoping that one day his training period will be over. Later, he confronted his father, asking why the training sessions were so difficult. You are training for the stormy day. The fisherman replied. He smiled gently and patted his boy on the back, adding, My son, there may be no storm for 20, 30, or even 60 years, but one day, without notice, the storm will come. When it comes, those who are not prepared would pay the price. Several years later, half of the men in the boy's village went on a fishing expedition. The boy went with them. Big fishes did not seem to swim close to the villages anymore. To catch a big fish, men had to go really far into the sea. On this fateful day, the storm came. It came suddenly and raged for hours. When it finally subsided, the men who stayed back at the village sent on out a rescue team, and the only living soul was a fisherman's boy afloat moving around and around in circles. As he climbed into one of the rescue boats, he remembered his father saying, when the storm comes, those who are not prepared will pay the price. He had seen several of his playmates and villagers perish because they could not float long enough as they had not practiced hard enough. He had seen unprepared people pay with their lives. There's a storm coming soon. 
It is called the rapture. Only those who are prepared will be saved when it comes. That day, many people will weep and gnash their teeth. Many will end up in hell, burning in agony forever. Because when the things seemed rosy, they ignored God and his promptings to live holy. When that time comes, will you be amongst the survivors? May the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we look at the topic for today, in the time of peace, prepare for war, part one. If we look at it, you know, our daddy in the Lord explained this particular topic with um, a storyline. And if you look at it, there are a lot of things, a lot of things we can learn from it. The first one, the father taught him, the father taught his son how to prepare for the storm. This is a fisher, a fisherman. He taught his son how to prepare for the storm. And why did he teach his son to prepare for the storm? Number one, he said, the storm will not likely, it won't give notice. So he has to prepare. Because the son will not tell him that, oh, I am coming. So he would have been able to say, okay, let me use this time. Because the storm will not tell him when it is coming, he needs to be on guard. He needs to, he, he shouldn't meet him on a west, so he will not be sorry. Another thing is that there may be no storm in 20 years, in 30 years, even in 60 years. But it doesn't change the fact that storm will come one day. In fact, storm is inevitable. And we could see, even from the storyline, that the storm eventually came. And thank God he prepared. So it is important that he prepares. You know, and just like if we liken it to the kingdom of God too. The rapture will not tell us when it will come. Yes, a lot of people would have told you, my great-great-grandfather has been hearing. That still doesn't stop the fact that there will be rapture one day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another thing is, now, how do you prepare? When the father, having known, the father had told him that you need to prepare because of these two reasons. That the storm will come, is inevitable. Whether it has, because you have not seen it or some people have told you, it does not change the fact that the storm will come. And that the storm, when it comes, it will come without giving anybody any notice. So that means it is indeed to prepare. How should he prepare? We could see from it that it's obvious that it takes a lot of discipline for him to prepare. A lot of discipline. He will need to deprive himself of a lot of things. Maybe when his mates were playing outside, having fun, you know, he was busy with his father, learning the ropes, learning the stro- new, practicing new strokes and new techniques on how to prepare for the storm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another thing is that his teacher, that is his father, was never satisfied. He, keep, he kept on pushing him to be better, to be improving himself, to be, you know, to go better at doing what? At preparing for the storm. In fact, there was a particular one, a particular exercise at the hotels, the one that he will be going around the circle. That one was so rigorous that he almost threw in the towel that he was not doing again. He had to meet his father. Why am I doing this? So his father had to explain to him that if you do not prepare now, you would pay the price. And thank God he prepared. And when the storm came, he was able to scale through. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he would have, you know, thrown in the towel and said he was not interested again. And like I did, we've actually likened it to our journey in, in, this, in life. How, you know, so the storm is the rapture, like our daddy in the Lord has told us. And the rapture will come whether we want, whether we believe it or not. The fact that you do not believe it does not make mean that it will not come. Let's look at just like the Bible reading that we read today. The Bible reading that we read today made us understand. It says, I am the memory verse. He said, I'm behold, I am come, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. That is to say, according to how he has prepared. So whether you want to believe or not, Jesus Christ is coming and he will definitely come. 
the fact that the, the storm has not come, the rapture does not change the fact that it will come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And how do you prepare? You need to give your life to Christ because that boy has a father. So you need to give your life to Christ. He is the one that is coming. Give your life to him. And having given your life to him, the book of Galatians 2 verse 20 made us understand that once you give your life to Christ, he says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Once you have identified with the crucifixion and crucifixion and resurrection of, of Jesus Christ, the life you live now is no longer yours. So he will start teaching you and preparing you on how to prepare for the storm that will not tell you when it's coming. So just like that fisherman's son had a father in the fisherman, you should also have a father in Jesus Christ who will teach you the strokes, the new practices, the new techniques on how to be able to withstand the storm when it comes. So that what? You will not be outside like we have been told. At the end of the day, what happened? Blessed are those who wash their robes. That's where the practice comes. That they may have the right to the tree of life. So that at the end of the day, you can have the right to the tree of life. And you may go through the gates into the city. And you will not be outside like dogs. May we not be outside on the last day like dogs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And like the father of the born, he will not be satisfied. We should be ready for that. And that is why every now and then we should dip ourselves in preparing. How do we prepare? The word of God also likewise. The word of God made us understand that God is a spirit and they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you want to be prepared, you can't afford to look, you know, Jesus Christ said also that those that are fit for the kingdom, what did he say? He said, Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand onto the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. You can be preparing at the same time, be watching what the world is doing and be conforming to the standard of the world. Then you are not fit for the kingdom. Then you are not prepared. The storm, when the, when the time comes, there are such a person who will pay the price. And unfortunately, paying the price is paying the price with such a person's life. May we not be of when after when Jesus had already paid the price with his own with his by dying and shedding his blood for us. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. May we be prepared and at the end of the day enter into the city and not be outside like dogs in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So in preparation, we need to conform to the word of God. We need to renew our mind. The word of God says they that must worship him, they must worship him what? In spirit and in truth because God is a spirit. And how you need to allow the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit to guide you. And in truth, dipping yourself in the word of God. Getting better and better and renew your mind in the word of God. And like we were told, that blessed are those who wash their robes. You know, so that you become holy. You know, on a daily today, you are getting better like that boy. His father was never satisfied. Because the more, the more and more you get to understand God more, you get to be more grounded, more firm in the faith that you have gotten. This is how God also wants us to be. A lot of people, just like that boy, that he almost said he was not doing again. And maybe he was looking at his friends. And that could, could amount to backsliding. Maybe that particular, maybe it is fasting and praying. There are a lot of things you are depriving yourself of. And you're like, what is it, self? Is it because of the storm? Yes. Because eventually, thank God that he took that practice. And because he had taken it a long, a long enough, he was able to withstand the storm. Probably, peradventure, some of them also took the practice. But they threw in the towel at the, at, at the long run. So they could not, when the storm lasted for so long, they could not withhold. What happened? They paid with their price. May the Lord help us to stand and stand firm in him 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Like our daddy said, he said that day, many people will weep and gnash their cheeks. May that not be your portion and my portion. Many will end up in hell. Why? Because they can't withstand the storm. Because they did not prepare. Burning in, the, burning in agony forever. Because when things seemed rosy, they ignored God. Like we have been told, in the time of peace, now there is a time of peace. A time of storm is coming. A lot of people, it is a time of peace. They are carried away by the things of the world. Forgetting the fact that a time is coming. The storm is coming. Rapture is coming. Praise the Lord. Because the things are simple, they ignored God and is prompting to live holy. God is, maybe God is talking to you. This life you are living is not right. This life that you need to hold on to God. But they have forgotten, they have, they have ignored it to live holy and to come to the right path. When the time comes, will you be among the survivor? That is a question for you and I. And like Pabi said, who are the people that will be outside? Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic acts, the sexual immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves the practices of falsehood. You know, when they say idolaters, a lot of people feel until you cap something. No. Once you love anything outside God, you are taking, allowing it to take first place in you. But adventure, the reason why at this point in time you are not preparing is because you are holding on to some bad habits or you are holding on to the pleasures of the world. It's taken as idolatry. Why don't you repent so that you will not be outside on the last day, but you will enter the gate and into the city. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, when, what, when the time comes, will you be among the survivor? To be among the survivor, you have to hold on to Jesus Christ. You have to keep preparing yourself through the Spirit and through the truth of the Word of God. May the Lord help us, give us the grace to hold on firmly, to be prepared, fully prepared, and not, and not pay that that painful price with our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. The action point. Don't mind the fact that many people are no longer preparing for the rapture. Make sure you are ready. You are ready so, so that you will not be weeping on the last day. As for you and I, may we not weep on the last day. May it be rejoicing for us and for every member of our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review for today. God bless you. Amen.